Hello ladies and gentlemen, Chit Helens here to test out another myth related to the small Century Optics Adapter. Sidebar, the Century I used for these tests uh, came without its locking screw, so I had to go out and find a replacement in the real world. And the solution is 4-40 screws, they're very tiny, very thin, so you just buy a small one, cut it shorter with a set of pliers, and then you super glue a small nut to the head so you can handle it with your bare hands. Sidebar over. Back to business. If you ever considered getting a small Century Optics adapter, you've probably came across at least one or more posts by people claiming that flipping the rear element of the anamorphic will give you closer focus capabilities while maintaining infinity focus. I'm gonna quote just a few parts here in the video, but you can find the full posts at the blog. Ryan Patrick O'Hara says, I was just fiddling with the Century Optics adapter and had real trouble focusing, etc. I tried diopters on it and got it working a bit better. But just now I screwed out the rear glass element and reversed it and put it back in. And to my surprise, it's working like a charm now. I can focus on objects close as a few inches without diopters have infinity focus and the picture is way much sharper than before. Another one is El Paolo and he says, uh, On a fixed anamorphic adapter, the lens elements are set to converge at infinity and typically have a working range down to about 6 to 8 feet. You can use a diopter in front of the adapter to pull it for close focus shots. The Optex happens to have a rear anamorphic lens element that can be removed and put back in an inverted position, which makes it work in close focus range without needing a diopter. The question here is, if turning the glass around would bring such benefits, why weren't these adapters originally released like that? It's time to test this out. I've reached out to Brian Caldwell, the designer of the Metabones uh, Speed Booster, uh, asking what I should expect in terms of results by flipping the glass around. And here's what he said. Assuming the rear group is a cemented doublet with a leading negative element, then flipping it would move the principal plane of the rear group towards the front group. This is similar to focusing the adapter for a closer object distance. However, I expect that the aberration balance would be completely trashed especially at longer focal lengths where you use the entire rear aperture of the adapter. Also, the squeeze ratio would drop just like it always does when focusing a dual focus adapter to a closer object. Personally, I wouldn't do it except as a fun experiment. I would expect much better results with a diopter. So here we go for an exciting round of testing. On the first test, I'm racking focus between 75 centimeters, the first LEGO set, 1.4 meters the AT-80 walker and 2.5 meters at the wall. Since the goal is to test faster apertures, lenses are all wide open. Results are very poor at close focus for the unflipped sentry. The plus 0.5 acromat improved focus for both the AT-80 and the wall, but not much for the close focus mark. I must say it was surprising to see how much better things looked with the flipped rear element, especially at the wider end. Then I went on to test chromatic aberration. With Canon's 40mm I found myself an interesting scenario with lots of high contrast between bright and dark. With a relatively easy subject to focus on, also known as rug hanging on a tree. Fortunately, the chromatic aberration is bad on either cases, so it's not a big deal if the rear element is flipped or not. From that, I moved to test infinity focus on super wide shots. This is where the flip really struggled, as I could see the loss of sharpness much more easily and the edge compromise creeping in much further into the frame. The last test is for longer lenses and I used the Jupiter 9 85mm at f2.8 to see how it performed and if the stretch factor was affected by the flipped rear element. I won't deny the mod is much sharper than the original configuration for close focus, but the stretch factor indeed decreases. In my case, I was getting around 1.25 as opposed to 1.33. Also, you can notice the diamond-shaped bokeh, indicating that there's something wrong with the setup. Much like what I mentioned about the SLR Magic Anamorph 1.3350. 
If you want to do the trick to your own century, just unscrew these two small screws at the back, they don't come off completely, and remove the cover. Then take out the glass, flip it and close it back. Be careful because the entire back of the body comes loose when you do this. The process doesn't take five minutes. I believe it's a reasonable technique for medium close-ups. If you can't afford plus 0.5 diopters, seriously, I consider this is an appropriate solution. The edges become more messed up, but they're pretty bad in the original, so it's not a huge deal. The biggest issue is that now you have to play much more to the century's strong side, uh, favoring wider angles and stepping away from anything that's pretty much longer than 50 mil. I'll admit that the results for this video were very surprising and I expected image quality to drop much more. What about you? Let me know if you'll be flipping your century or if you'll just keep on using diopters. If you like this video and you're interested in more tricks, tests and reviews, now is the perfect time to subscribe to the channel. And if you want that information in writing, well then check the blog for an even larger amount of articles. So see you next time, Fahadun's out.